G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our Backyard Farm and Aquaponics YouTube channel. Today's clip is going to be a bit of a catch up, just running through some seeds that have been sowing out. We might sow out a few more. I've planted out some seedlings and I need to harvest some of the rosellas on this bush behind me here, so let's get cracking. Before we start harvesting the rosellas, I just wanted to share with you this beautiful cayenne pepper. It's um, a plant that had to be uh, have the top chopped off. There's a little blue banded bee in there. It had to have um, a lot of the growth points chopped off due to uh, mite damage, and it's bounced back surprisingly well. Loads of new flowers. I'd say there would be hundreds of new flowers on there. So we're going to be getting fresh chilies all winter long here. Or well, what some people laughingly call a winter. For you guys up in the Northern Hemisphere, we're actually going to be growing similar crops now through our autumn and winter as you'll be growing through your spring and summer, especially you guys in the Northern States and Canada and also folks in Europe as well. So I just thought I'd point that out. I mean, even the asparagus has decided to throw up some new spears. Um, this back crown has bounced back nicely for you folks who have been following us for a little while. So these are our rosella bushes and they're all growing in a self-watering wicking bed there. They're actually a very water thirsty plant I found. I need to top them up every third day. Mind you, I think there's around about seven or eight plants in there. Um, so the fruit of the rosella, um, it's not really a fruit. What this is, is it's a closed flower bud and this is the calyx of the flower and inside it, we have a little seed pod. That's a seed pod. Now what you're actually after is the bit I just broke off. Just the calyx on the outside. It has a nice citrusy um, sweet flavor to it and it makes an absolutely fantastic jam, sauce and cordial. So this lot here, Bianca is um, interested in having a go at some cordial. And if we get a decent second flush, which it looks like we will with these small buds, um, the next lot will be turned into jam again. I'll set up the tripod and I'll hook into these guys and hopefully it won't take too long. So these plants are also known as sorrel in a few different places. I think the West Indies is one where they call them sorrel. We also know it here as Queensland jam plant. And I've heard people call it edible hibiscus as well. So these guys are ready to harvest once the base is roughly 20 to 30 mil across, which is what, an inch to an inch and a quarter. I'm just snipping them off with the secateurs here. And later on tonight, we'll uh, take the calyxes off inside, pop them into plastic bags, ready for Bianca to prepare over the weekend. So I just found this little bud here and the calyx is pretty much all dead. It's all dry, be very tough. But inside you can see the seed pod has already opened up. And if we give it a bit of a shake, we have a load of rosella seeds in there. These guys here, um, I got the seeds from Daniel. Thank you very much, mate. I'm definitely gonna be saving a few of these and we'll try and grow them again next season and see how they go. So I might just go and try and find a little um, envelope to put these guys in. So here's the rosella harvest from these plants. Not a huge one by any means, but because we'll be getting a couple of subsequent flushes, it won't be too bad. I'm just noticed we've got a little ladybug crawling around on there. Go Sikkim Rex, often hunt some aphids. Now, the rest of the plants here, um, as I said, there are some more blooms on there coming through, some small ones there. There's one down there by the look of it that bloomed today. They actually put on um, quite a very attractive display first thing in the morning when all the flowers have opened up. The next bed over is the old popcorn bed, the strawberry popcorn. It's um, long gone and that's actually the mulch I made from the stalks down there on the ground. Uh, in here we have the volunteer amaranth. It'll be spreading loads of seeds all around the front yard, which is great. And I've also clipped onto it a broad ripple yellow currant, which is also another volunteer plant. And I came out a little bit earlier and snipped a lot of the um, older growth away and I've reduced it down to three um, main stems. I also lifted it off the garden bed itself because I didn't want, you know, the stem to get any fungal outbreaks. And as you can see, uh, we do have a nice load of tomatoes on there. So these guys here are our favorite little cherry uh, tomato. So hopefully if we can trail these branches along and they do rather well, we'll get a nice bumper crop out of them. After I fixed up the tomato, I decided to top dress the bed with some compost. 
because I wanted to plan out some bits and pieces in here. Um, Kira helped me lift the compost if you're watching Bianca. So we spread that out nice and evenly and then I sprinkled on some good bug mix. Now good bug mix is basically a mix of um, herbs and other flowering plants that attract beneficial insects like lacewings, ladybugs and wasps into the patch. So I sprinkled a whole heap over the back there and just along the front of the bed here, I decided to sow out some saved daikon radish seeds. Uh, there's some seeds I saved back in 2013. To plan out the daikon, all I did was make a couple of trenches in the top of the compost, and then about every 50 to 75 mil or um, two to three inches, I popped in three daikon radish seeds. Pretty much all decided to um, sow them out after chatting to um, Frank on our last Patreon hangout, and Frank brought his massive daikon along to show off. So I figured, you know, I love my nice raw spicy salad, so I thought I'd have a crack at some more. Just in the next bed over, I planted out... Sorry folks, my battery just ran out and I had to grab an extension cord to plug my charger into the camera. The next two beds we have here are our brassica beds. Uh, this one here is broccoli. I popped broccoli out in a more exposed position because it doesn't tend to um, bolt to seed or bolt to flower as fast as cauliflower and the cauliflower is in the next bed over. I've actually got a couple of off cuts of shade cloth there so if these guys get a little bit too hot in this position I can shade them. Um, today was around about 34 degrees celsius which is um, low to mid 90s from memory so we definitely do have, you know, a very warm autumn here. That cauliflower is actually in a very sheltered position. We have a stand of banana trees here um, that will shade it over the next few months. And um, probably uh, May, I'll get in there and prune that Chinese celtus right back. And that'll let a lot of the northern winter sun in. And these guys should do really well from there. Um, that taro generally dies back as well as things cool down a bit. So that's the start of my brassicas. Um, out the back I'll do a um, second planting of brassicas a little bit later on in the season. So while we're up this end of the yard I thought I'd show you our bananas. We have our second bunch on. This one only has three hands and is already producing male flowers up in there. I'm, I'm not too worried about that because as we've found with the large bunch I harvested from up there the other day, we just can't eat them fast enough unless we're eating them morning, noon and night. Um, we actually lost one hand, it just went a little bit too manky. So these guys here, um, being only three hands, they'll be easily consumed in a week or so probably only in a couple of days actually. I um, think I might chop that bell off as well because we have problems with the fruit bats coming down and what they do is they stick their claws into the fruit as they um, feed on the nectar from the male flowers. So I might do that tomorrow I think. Uh, just down here um, we have our little wicking garden. I really haven't done a lot down in here. Um, I've just got a bit of a crook back at the moment so I can't lift uh, a lot of bits and pieces. So Bianca's told me she's going to have a bit of a working bee with me. So, but anyway, we've been still harvesting the oregano from in there. Some of that went into some Mexican the other night. And the Brazilian spinach, uh, I've pretty much all left this lot alone because we're harvesting a lot from the aquaponics. The sweet potato has got a load of mite damage on it. Thank you very much to David who um, brought around some of his excess mites and um, beneficial wasps the other day. I've popped a little bit of the um, mite mix in there, but I think I'm pretty much all going to harvest these guys through the week. Uh, I'll wait until Kira finishes school one afternoon and we'll go dig through there and see what sweet potatoes we can find because that's where I'd actually like to um, sow out or plant out a little Kajari melon seedling in a couple of weeks time. Just because this area of the yard gets a lot of sun through winter. And just down in here we have our snake beans. These are our purple snake beans. We harvested about a dozen or so off of here and we found them very tasty, but I've decided to let the remainder on the plant just dry up so we can collect some seeds. I've found generally when you um, do let a couple of beans dry up on the plant, that's pretty much all it for it. But as I said before, we've got a warmer climate here. So I'm actually going to sow some more out um, in this little pouch here and see if we can get another crop or two come through. So what I'm going to do is actually grab a bean from over the back here that has dried off on the plant itself. So what happens is they generally go very hard and very crispy and you just pop them open and you can pull the seeds out. 
I've got some in a packet, but I thought I'd just harvest some straight from the plant and pop them back into the um, pouch. So we'll grab four out. Whoops, come on fella. Let's pop that pod down. So I'll sow these four just directly into the soil down here. Let's move that vine out of the way. Let's come up through the handle. Um, these guys can just go directly into the soil. And I will give them a little bit of a top water though. Because it's not very moist on top. These are basically a little wicking style pouch. What I do is I pop the pouch into a tray of water and as the roots go down towards the bottom of the pouch um, they obviously get their, their moisture and then the plants absolutely love it. I've had um, great success with this method. I might actually put one a little bit out towards the middle. Actually I don't know if you can see it but the, um, the soil down in there is actually very moist at the moment so I may not have to water them at all. So there we go. Next crop of snake beans. Just down at the base of our back stairs here, we have a little self-watering wicking barrel I like to grow my carrots in. Now this soil is nice and sandy, specifically for growing carrots. It just helps the roots grow deep and straight. I do like to feed it up though before I sow seeds out. So I popped in round about 10 litres or quarter of a gallon of well sifted compost through there and then just mixed it in. Gave that a little bit of a water just to get some moisture in there as well. And then I just sprinkled the carrot seeds over the top. On top of those fellas, I popped round about a centimetre or just over a third of an inch of sifted compost and gave that a very light sprinkle with the water as well, just to keep it nice and moist. I then popped on my little garden towel and gave it a little bit of a water too. The reason for this towel is it just helps to keep the top of the compost nice and moist because in this position in the yard, it gets sun for many hours during the day and it tends to dry out very quickly. So the beauty of the towel is I can just pull it off in one go, unlike if I had a whole heap of other mulch on there, say like sugarcane mulch or something like that. Now, as soon as the um, sprouts, a number of sprouts reach, I don't know, probably about an inch in length or um, two and a half centimetres, this will come off the towel and then I'll just water it morning and night just to keep the moisture in there. And that should be enough to give us a, a nice covering of green over the top of this barrel. And in a couple of months time, some very tasty carrots. So in the backyard patch, I'll be working the root pouch gardens through winter and the two metal beds in the hoop house are pretty much all going to be the only beds I'll be growing through the cooler months in. I'm going to let the others rest for a little while. Uh, the main reason is I did some damage to my back about six months ago and I'm waiting on another uh, lo lot of tests to come through, a bone um, test, and we'll see what's going on there. So I'm not doing any heavy work for a little while. So um, the one bed in the um, hoop house will be stripped out. That's the second one. Uh, we'll top um, dress it with some compost and progressively sow out some 60 day cauliflower so we can have a continuing crop through the cooler season. I'm going to pop another two broccoli in the pumpkin bed out the back here and along with the six out the front that should see the three of us through for all our broccoli needs through the winter months. Um, you can progressively harvest broccoli as well so if you want to check out that little clip up there that'll explain it a little bit more. The aquaponics is booming. We've been harvesting a load of greens out of there over the last couple of months. Um, it's a, uh, one of the things that's just seen us through while I've had my crook back because I can work at sort of just above waist height without bending over too much. If you want to check out the sort of things we're harvesting, there's a little clip up there you can suss out. It also includes a look at a uh, pesto I like to make up from the greens that we take out of the system. And for all you folks who like backyard farming and aquaponic style vlogs, all you need to do is click on my hairy little mug down there to subscribe. You need to jump through a few hoops like click the little bell icon when it appears. But as long as you do that, you'll be sent notification whenever I upload a clip to the channel. You can come along and say good day. I do hope you're all well and happy and that your own patches and aquaponic systems are booming. And I'll catch you next clip. Cheers all. Have a great one.